on another scorching hot day here in Limerick. Everybody bracing themselves for the latest big monster derby of this roller coaster championship. Throw in fast approaching, so let's take a check on the teams. Brian Lohan has made one change to his team a week on from that nail-biting win over Wexford. Number 18, David McInerney starts instead of Paddy Fitzpatrick at wing back. Last week's man of the match, Rory Hayes, is at number two as usual, with the Clare quarterback, John Conlon, sitting in at number six. Tony Kelly from Ballier is named at 11 as usual, but he will go wherever he's needed. He's hit 230 in Clare's first three games. Kieran Kingston has reacted to the defeat to Limerick three weeks ago by making three changes to his starting 15. Robert Downey from Glen Rovers returns to action and lines out at fullback in place of Damien Cahalan, who had his appendix removed during the week. Luke Mead has also been promoted and slots into midfield alongside Dara Fitzgibbon, while Alan Cadigan has done enough to get the start and is back in at number 13. Cork are captained by Patrick Horgan, who's named at centre forward, but is likely to line out closer to goal. So another beautiful day here in Limerick, temperature around 25 degrees at the moment and the crowd of around three and a half thousand people soaking up the sunshine and enjoying the atmosphere as we edge closer to throw in. Nicky English alongside me in the commentary box. Nicky, I know you made the point in your Irish Times column this morning that these two teams were coming in in very different states of mind to this game this evening. You see, Clare have had you know, three championship matches at this stage and they, they played last Saturday very, very warm conditions in Thurles and but, but they have a level of consistency and, and of performance built up. You know, that's been impressive and I'm, I'm sure Brian Lohan will be delighted with, with the spirit and the work rate that they have, you know, epitomised by Cahill Malone in the middle of the field, Aidan McCarthy and Ryan Taylor, wing forwards. They, they work very, very hard and you have, you know, the outstanding Rory Hayes at the back. Uh, but and but he, I'm sure Brian is pretty sure as how they'll play. Whereas you know you go to Cork, it's three weeks since they had a match, plenty of criticism of the team itself, Patrick Horgan, key men, and you know so you really don't know how they're going to play, and um, their best might be good enough. So before the action gets underway, we stand for our own Naveen here at the LIT Gaelic Grounds. So there's our match referee, John Keenan from Ockram in County Wicklow, his linesman Liam Gordon of Galway and Sean Clear from Kilkenny. You'll have noticed there the Cork team just coming back out onto the field. They did their warm-ups in their training tops, then went back in to the dressing room area to put on their jerseys, not uh, staying out in that hot sun any longer than they had to. Clare sticking to the more traditional route. They've had seven days now to try and lift themselves the banner for another demanding knockout match. Cork, as Nicky said, well rested, but are they battle hardened? Nobody too sure who's going to come through here and advance to next weekend's quarter final. All will be revealed before the evening's out. Away we go. Cork won the toss and they'll play in this first half from right to left down towards the Ennis Road end of the ground. First ball delivered in by Robbie O'Flynn and gathered by Connor Cleary. Rock solid at full back last weekend. Ball zipped into the clear full forward line. First test for Collins in the court goal. And he comes up with the right answer. Support from Millerick. Here's Tim O'Mahony. We know how Cork will play. They'll work it through the lines. They'll try and get their shooters on the ball. 
And here's Robbie O'Flynn trying to do just that. There's a hazy sunshine all around the LIT Gaelic grounds as that ball drops short. Aver Quilligan. His intervention cheered to the rafters by the Clare crowd, and now he drives it in towards Shanner again, testing out Rob Downey, the new Cork fullback. Sean O'Donoghue there in support, and the Spring Heel corner back will take it clear. Lovely first touch by Horgan. Didn't score from play against Limerick, and it's taken him less than 80 seconds to put that right. Great pass to play by bo both sides, plenty of action, and Patrick Horgan will be delighted to settle like that with a great score. Well, that score from Patrick Horgan is an historic one. It means he now joins Henry Shefflin and Joe Canning as the only hurlers to score 500 championship points. While down at the other end, it's cancelled out immediately by Ian Galvin, the only one of the clear forwards who didn't score against Wexford last Saturday. All square, less than two minutes in. It has been a a blistering start in blistering sunshine. O'Mahony looking to play it down the line. Cut out by Jeremy the Ryan, who bounces off Dara Fitzgibbon. Again, the Clare crowd loved that. Ger Millerick plays from the front. Again, Robbie O'Flynn is that conduit between defence and attack. He's trying to run David McInerney. They both go to ground. John Keenan says it was all fair. Here's Cadigan snapping around the break. Horgan on the loop. The trademark sidestep on his knees, bats it high and over the bar. Well, Patrick Horgan would look to have brought his A-game and Cork lead. Great play by, by Horgan again, off his knees. And you see Robbie O'Flynn causing problems with his pace for David McInerney on that side. Tony Kelly actually started off centre forward, but he was picked up immediately by Niall O'Leary for Cork, who was doing a man-marking job on him. Puck out delivered to David Reedy and won by the corner forward. He's got a free for his troubles. He was so impressive last weekend against Wexford. Helped himself to three points and did well to get out there in front of O'Mahony. Game has been played at a very high pace and great skill from both sides. First touch very, very clean on both sides. Good use of the ball and this is very, very entertaining stuff here. So Tony Kelly steps up to this. Hasn't been at his brilliant best over the last few weeks, but still shot nine points down in Thurless last Saturday. His first of the day is good. Sides level for the second time. Cork's forwards have moved a lot since the start of the game, but Shane K Kingston is now centre forward with Patrick Horgan at full forward. Puck out from Collins, trying to measure it for Fitzgibbon. Almost intercepted by Ryan Taylor, but not quite. Fitzgibbon again goes long. Cork with just two men up. It runs all the way inside, and there's a chance here. It's low, it's blocked. It was Horgan. Clearly got his body in the way, and Paul Flanagan across to pick up the pieces. The Clare back line called into action. But Horgan is wearing 11. He's playing at full forward on Connor Cleary, and there isn't a, another Cork forward within 30 yards of him. He's causing plenty of trouble for him, and he, he had a good chance there. And you hear the Cork supporters under us, they were unhappy with the second challenge by Conor Cleary. They, they felt that Patrick Horgan had been blocked off the second ball. But a good block by Conor Cleary nonetheless to get his body in the way. Well, Patrick Horgan has actually broken two records in these first few minutes. His two points from play means he's broken the record that was jointly held by Henry Shefflin and Eddie Kerr. So he's now got more scores from play in the championship than any other hurler. And he's joined the likes of Shefflin and Canning in the 500 club as well. And we're still inside the first few minutes. Puck out, batted down into the path of Tim O'Mahony. The man from Newtown, Shandrup, support outside from Shamie Harnady. Again, they've isolated Horgan over the head of the full forward and the full back. And Quilligan can pick out David McInerney at his leisure. Clare playing their fourth game in five weeks. Aidan McCarthy. Well, he's picked up where he left off last weekend, getting on the ball, shooting on sight, 
but that one is away to the left and wide. There wasn't much in it. That's uh, Claire's first wide of the day. Certainly not much in it. He was trying to just drift it in on the, on the breeze from left to right, and he's normally he's been very accurate in all the matches that Claire have played. But again, good first touch to get on it and, and get his shot away. Lovely first touch and close control from Jack O'Connor. Rolls it through towards Cadigan. Joined at the hip by Paul Flanagan. Man who captain Clare to a minor final back in 09. And Conlon drills it up the field. Again, the Cork backline play from the front. Here's Coleman. The man who pulls so many of the strings to Millerick into the space. Clare have plenty of bodies, though, in that zone of the field. Again, McCarthy is available and ready and fires in the shot and that one looked better the umpire took a moment well the umpire there just i think trying to communicate with john keenan they got their message across in the end all right john keenan was playing the advantage so whether it was over or not um is irrelevant really at this stage tony kelly has a, a chance to Put the, put the ball over the bar but you know good play again by McCarthy but the Cork backs also look sharp we've seen Sean O'Donoghue coming out quickly snappily to the ball Mark Coleman getting on it so the very high level of skill being displayed by both sides so as Nicky said uh, John Keenan does bring it back and Tony Kelly leaves us in no doubt right over the black spot two for him three for Clare they get their noses in front again Short puck out from Collins, takes the return, and now goes long. O'Flynn oh, didn't make a great job of the hand pass. O'Mahony oh, has to bend his back, trying to weave his way past Tony Kelly. Harnady now being hunted by Ryan. Cork making life very hard for themselves. So many bodies in there. Ball squirts out to Harnady. Just happened to be in the right place. Shoots on sight. Cork second wide. Poor wide by Jamie Harnady. He was lucky to get the ball. It was actually a flick back by from Dermot Ryan that actually came straight to his, his hands and should have done better from right in front of the goals. Well, it's been every bit as frantic and frenetic as we thought it might be. So many bodies packed into that middle third. Dara Fitzgibbon used his pace to get himself out of trouble. Kingston lost the Hurley, wins the free. Cork will look for more from Shane Kingston than they've seen in the game against Limerick. You know, his first touch there was very, very sharp, but they'll want him running at John Conlon and, and using his pace in that middle third. Well, we're four weeks out from the All-Ireland final now. Survival is the name of the game for Kieran Kingston and Brian Lohan. Cork manager said during the week he believes his team will have a big say in the championship yet. Brian Lohan thinking likewise, I'm sure. As Patrick Horgan comes all the way out from full forward to have a look at this. Five points, all from freeze in the Munster semi-final. And his radar locked on here. It's first score for eight minutes. Sides level for the third time. Much better strike from Patrick Horgan than any of his frees against Limerick. He was a little bit off that same evening. Tony Kelly in a scrap for possession. Comes up with the Schlitter in his left hand. Dara Fitzgibbon, Horgan after him as well. Kelly twists his way into space and Shanahar with that left paw to win it in front of Downey. With the real buzz as Shanahar goes through, still going. And eventually ran out of road. Wide ball. Big test for Robert Downey at full back. Shanahar is very, very good in the air. He likes to get it onto his left side. He got it on that time, and, and Mark Coleman got back and did very, very well to, to, to defend that situation. Puck out spilled by Conlon, grabbed by Robbie O'Flynn, who whips it in down towards the Ennis Road end of the ground and away for a cork wide, their third. Puck out already taken. Rory Hayes, man of the match against Wexford, is on the move. He's got the legs on O'Flynn. Pops it in towards Shanahar, broke towards Colm Galvin. That was a good recovery by O'Mahony, but the referee has penalised him for throwing that ball free in. Yeah, the application of this rule is pretty inconsistent, but I think 
Tim O'Mahony can have little complaint. He was, you know, he was on, on the ground. He, he had time to hold on to the ball, actually. And uh, if, if the pass play had continued, it was just going out to Colm Galvin anyway. Looked uh, borderline on the replay, but in real time, John Keenan felt there wasn't enough contact between hand and ball, and Tony Kelly does the needful clear edge ahead again. There's Patrick Collins from Ballonhasic. Served his apprenticeship under Anthony Nash for five seasons. Cleary. So sure-footed under high ball and low ball. And he finds his man, David Reedy, as well. Inside, Aidan McCarthy's on the move, just in the shadow of the Mackey stand. Line ball to clear. Well, so little space for both forward lines to work with. Yeah. In this case, I think actually Aidan McCarthy took that ball out with, off his leg. See, Kieran Kings is not happy with the decision. I think Aidan, Car Aidan had two, two bites at the cherry. He poor first touch and then kicked it out. So we're 12 minutes in to this round two qualifier. Nicely balanced. First time they've played in the championship for two seasons. Sideline cut quickly taken. Tony Kelly had made a run into space, but he was off balance and under pressure. And that's a third clear wide. It's a habit they will not want to get into. Yeah, and the wind is a little bit across from, from left to right as Tony Kelly struck that ball, so it was just a, that helped it on its way wide. Horgan and Cleary. That is turning into a battle royal. John Keenan there has uh, flagged it as a 65 to Cork. Just came off the boot of the Clare fullback. He's in good form at the moment, Conor Cleary. But he's got his hands full with Horgan in the mood he's in today. Particularly with the way Cork are actually pulling out the half forward line and creating a lot of space in front of Patrick Horgan. So earlier on, Shamie Harnett, he had a good chance to actually put it in, put a better ball in front of Patrick Horgan. The service maybe against Limerick was not good enough to him, but there's plenty of space there today. There's no excuse for the Cork forwards to not be able to find Patrick Horgan with good ball. So Patrick Horgan from Glen Rovers on a beautiful day for hurling, for free taking, and for players like Patrick Horgan to do their thing. He's hit all four of Cork's points, two from open play, and the sides deadlocked for the fourth time. Ball just seemed to get lost in the sunshine. John Keenan gives the advantage to Luke Mead. He picks out Kingston. Again, there's just one man inside. Kingston will take on the shot, but didn't hit it with any great conviction. Four wides for Cork. Definitely very little conviction in that from Shane Kingston, and we've seen a wide from Robbie O'Flynn and Jamie Harnady, and really de solely dependent on Horgan so far. Aver Quilligan there took his time, went short to Cleary. Batted away by Mark Coleman, and runs through to Harnady. Cork really missed him in the last quarter against Limerick. Mead, in at nine today from the start, to Cadigan, who also gets his chance. His effort, though, half-blocked by Paul Flanagan. And that's another wide, another missed opportunity for Cork. They're very dominant in their in the half back line, though, and winning loads of possession. But they just do need they do need to fix that shooting. No doubt, Clare have the momentum behind them. They've actually won. Uh, five of their last six matches across league and championship Cork with a, a three week break they should be re-energised they should be rejuvenated but just now ball not sticking in their forward line that's David McInerney who just lets rip and McInerney with a spectacular score All-Ireland winner back in 2013 and still going strong what an unbelievable striker of the ball David McInerney always has been Allowed for the left to right win. Magnificent strike of the ball. Well, that score from McInerney from Tulla edges Clare ahead again. 
and it got the crowd here in the stand underneath us out of their seats. Diagonal ball cut out by Conlon. Here's Cahill Malone. He's had a, a quiet first quarter. Helps out Conlon. Returns the compliment. And Conlon lets it in towards the half forward line. There's a battle on between Reedy and Coleman. And Luke Mead it is who emerges with the Schlitter. This time the spearhead and the cork attack is Jack O'Connor. They're rotating constantly. He's taking on Hayes. He's gone by him. O'Connor! Roofs it in the back of the net. Jack O'Connor with his first ever championship goal. 17 minutes in. Aver Quilligan beating all ends up. Yeah, wow, what a, what a finish by Jack O'Connor. I see him coming through and off to Hurley. I need on no, on none other than Rory Hayes. He's mar his direct opponent. So yeah, that's, a, that's a score Cork needed because they've had a lot of dominance, but they haven't been able to put it on the scoreboard. Well, Kieran Kingston has set his team up to score goals. 17, if memory serves me correct, across the Allianz League. It's just their second of the championship. And Jack O'Connor with a real keeper, one for the scrapbook. Down at the other end, it's Reedy, and it's away and wide. Four for Clare. Well, Rory Hayes, one of the quickest, if not the quickest, corner back in the game. And Jack O'Connor had the wheels to take him on, beat him, and fire an unstoppable shot to the back of the Clare net here come Cork again Harnady exchanges a neat little one too hooked as he tried to deliver the shot and Aver Quilligan just that one clean sheet to show for his efforts this season that was against Waterford in the first round of the Munster Championship starts another Clare counter attack but not for long Here's the goal scorer, Jack O'Connor. The marking's loose. He's lost Rory Hayes. O'Connor sprints through, goes low. Quilligan, brilliant save. Flicks it up and away from goal and denies O'Connor a second green flag. Great speed again by Jack O'Connor, and you can see they're hungry for goals when, when they get, aw get away. Rory Hayes really has lost a bit of confidence after that, uh, that last goal. Well, three and a half thousand in the LIT Gaelic grounds. It feels like ten times more as Aidan McCarthy flashes that shot across the face of goal. Clare needed it. They leave empty-handed. Let's take another look at the save from Quilligan from O'Connor. Yeah, did very, very well. Stood up and, and, and got the ball away and, and created a chance down at the other side. Harnady took it, set his feet just inside his own half. No trouble to him. A first of the afternoon for Shami Harnady. Cork's lead out to three. Shami Harnady has got plenty of possession so far, but that's his his first score and you know one he needed to settle him down. But Cork, you know, well on top here just now. Cork's forward line starting to hum. Cahill Malone from Six Mile Bridge drives through and takes the score. Cahill Malone has been very important for Clare in all the matches so far. And just when they needed a score and just needed to settle down coming into the water break, he comes up trumps for them. Well, there's the cue for the water break that gives us all a chance to catch our breath. Let's head to the studio and check in with the panel. Thanks, guys. Yeah, look, at, it, at the start of the game there, I think both teams are trying to figure themselves out at the moment. Uh, noticeable that a bit of nervousness may be out there. Cork had a few very poor wides where they had actual, you know, f free enough shots from the forwards, uh, and they should be better than that. Clare had a couple of bad misses, I feel, as well there. But that goal from Jack O'Connor, he's finding his feet. Uh, brilliant, brilliant finish, uh, and got another chance there with a great save from Eva Quilligan. Clear, I find it hard to get uh, Tony Kelly on the ball there as well. Aidan McCarthy is shown very well, but he's shooting is a small bit erratic. It's a show if they can get the ball in there, and Shannon, he took on Robert Downey there as well in the first few minutes, so they need to get the ball in a small bit more to him. On Cork side, um, Patrick Horgan had a goal chance as well, but he scored two points from play, got a couple of frees, but I think the likes of Harnedy and Kingston and uh, Darif is given Mark Coleman, they're getting on the ball a bit more in the last five, five six minutes, so it's important uh, 10, 15 minutes for Clear coming up. Thanks, Ollie. Thank you, JJ. Both teams getting hydrated here ahead of the second quarter. But what a first 19 minutes we've had, Nicky. So far, so good. It's living up to expectations. Very high level of skill from both sides. You know, they're wides apart. Both sides have hit 
you know, unnecessary wides and their, their shooting has been a bit erratic. You know, we saw Aidan McCarthy missing the couple, Jamie Harnady, the, all the Cork half forwards actually were, were guilty of, of, of poor, poor wides. But, you know, at the same time, it's, the standard is high. Both teams are fairly closely matched at this stage, but Cork have the, the, the higher percentage of possession in the middle third and using the ball very, very well. And um, they look dangerous. So both teams uh, content to squeeze every last second out of that water break. It's another baking hot day here in the Midwest. As Patrick Collins gets us up and running again. Goes down this left-hand side looking for the hand of Harnady. Ryan Taylor have drifted back to help out his half-back line. Ball ricochets to Tim O'Mahony. Colm Galvin has picked up a bang and just a little slow getting back to his feet as Harnady fires in a delivery that was in the general direction of Jack O'Connor but runs out for a sixth Cork wide. It's poor from poor from Jamie Harnady and uh, the referee's holding it up because of that bang to Colm Galvin who's really not been involved very much nor has Tony Kelly and they're two players that you know clear rely on to to create chances, to create play, and they've not really been involved at all. Niall O'Leary doing a good job so far, and Tony Kelly. Nicky, this might give us a chance just to talk briefly about the key matchups and how the two teams have, have set up. Anything that's caught your eye? We see Tony Kelly is actually playing nominally centre forward, but Mark Coleman hasn't picked him up. Mark Coleman, if he's going to pick someone up, he picks up Galvin, and here you see Niall O'Leary is picking up Tony Kelly. O'Leary got his hurley to that first delivery Kelly is after the second ball and he comes away with it well he's trying everything he knows to get into the game to get into a rhythm because as we know so well when he plays well so do Claire Jack O'Connor it was who committed the foul free taken by Kelly and he did it all on his own he won it he scored it normal service resumed yeah, superb strike of the ball, and see when he gets back to Niall O'Leary, they get involved, get in a tangle again. Well, Niall O'Leary from Castle Lions couldn't be much closer to Tony Kelly. He's been his shadow for the last 21 minutes. Well, it was Kelly with the quick free, I beg your pardon, to Carl Malone. It happened in the, in the blink of an eye. Malone had got loose, he peeled away. And it's now a one-point game again. Lovely, cheeky lift there by Flanagan initially, but he just couldn't get it to stick. Neither could the Corkman, Robbie O'Flynn. It literally was hot there for a moment as Galvin tries to release McCarthy. Yeah, but you can see the pace on that ball when it hit the surface. Yeah, it's really poor enough, but... Colin Galvin, though, really, he had plenty of space in front of Aidan McCarthy to put the ball into. Beautiful point, Colin Malone again, the last two scores for Clare. You know, he's really important in that, in that midfield for them. Colin Malone showing the sort of form that saw him nominated for an All-Star last season. Speaking of All-Stars, there's John Conlon. Won his All-Star in the forward line a few years ago. Playing much more orthodox at centre-back today, Mark and Shane Kingston. You know, in, in previous games, we've seen him playing sweeper more, but today he's doing a man-on-man man job on, on Kingston with Conor Cleary picking up Horgan inside. So as that stat showed, things very evenly balanced in terms of possession, likewise on the scoreboard. Poor sideline cut by Coleman, and Clare will try and play on the counter-attack. Carl Malone chasing after him is Horgan, the core captain. Malone uses the back door to Conor Cleary. Flanagan and John Conlon has time to get his head up and pick out the pass and the run. It's Ian Galvin who does well to deceive Sean O'Donoghue, but not Luke Mead. Back to mind the house. Untidy clearance picked up by Tony Kelly. The crowd behind him like it. The Clare crowd love it. Four points for Tony Kelly. Level again. 
and yeah. they've reeled Cork back in after that Jack O'Connor goal. They have really improved since the water break and got more possession and great but great point by Tony Kelly. Just all their big players playing better now and, and using the ball much better and much better combinations. Well, again, you can hear the banner roar, Conlon, their leader, winning that free off the back of Tony Kelly's first point from play. And as Nicky said, the, the big players, the team leaders coming more and more into the game for Clare now. Yeah, Conlon, we saw before, Connor Cleary passing the ball around, getting the ball nicely down in front of Galvin. Luke Mee did really well to get back, but the clearance came straight to Tony Kelly. So good period for Clare just now. The iconic Clare number 11 in his 42nd championship match away to the right. Just when it seemed like he was in the zone, seven wides for Clare. Lovely measured puck out by Patrick Collins to Tim O'Mahony. A bounce just to buy himself a little more time. An awkward one for Cadigan. Harnady's route to goal is blocked. That particular turnstile not open yet as Galvin flashes it through in towards his brother, Column to Ian. Nothing doing this time. Robbie O'Flint standing and waiting. A rare opportunity there for him to gather his thoughts. Horgan goes down, clearing the nearest man to him. The forward gets the benefit of the doubt, free in. Yeah, good ball by Robbie O'Flynn. No, that's, that's what I was saying earlier. There's loads of space inside of Patrick Horgan. And you know, Connor Cleary has a tough job. It's, you know, he's there. You see it up at the top of the screen there. You see him just uh, def in, definitely holding up Patrick Horgan. And the, the forward in that instance is mostly going to get the benefit of the doubt. Five for Patrick Horgan. It's the lead again for Cork. The prize and offer for the winners a place in next weekend's All Ireland quarter final when one of these two teams will be just 70 minutes away from a big day out at Crow Park again. The ball is delivered into Cork territory. Niall O'Leary, first man to react to Jer Millerick. Wrapped up and fouled by Ryan Taylor. Yeah, I see Ryan Taylor is fouling Jer Mellerick there, but on, on, from the long clear puckouts, Cork are doing very, very well at the back. They're, they're defending well, those long puckouts. Cork trying to service the goal scorer, Jack O'Connor. Rory Hayes lost his footing, but recovered it again very quickly. Despite the best efforts of Conlon, that's run out for a 65, but he's been caught late by Jack O'Connor. He's claiming it was shoulder to shoulder. John Conlon is down and that is definitely worth another look yeah well it was a 65 anyway and the, and the umpire was playing and you know that's the interest from jack o'connor he knows what he's doing there he's very very late well he plowed into conlon and a yellow card for the cork goal scorer but again we saw that jack o'connor is causing trouble for rory hayes rory hayes a bit a bit nervy a bit tentative he he saw that run and that goal from jack o'connor and he's He's trying to make certain sure he's winning the ball, and he's not. He's, he's just, his touch is not as assured as it has been in the matches today. He's a real warrior, John Conlon, back on his feet. As Brian Lowe makes a change, just feels something's not working in that forward line. And it's a straight swap. It's Mark Rogers from Scarif to replace Ian Galvin from Clonlara. Yeah, we've seen Mark Rogers, though, doing very, very well when he's been introduced. Um, much later in games against Tipperary and last week against last week in Torles, but he's he's very very good this guy Rogers. More target practice for Patrick Horgan. I'm surprised that Clare don't have Aaron Shanahan more directly in front of goal. He seems to be playing right right corner forward, and uh, Ian Galvin was taking a lot of this, the the slack inside in front of the goal. So Corks lead out to two. We're in the 29th minute of the first half. It's knockout, old style, old school championship hurling. 
this repeat of the 2013 All-Ireland Final, which of course uh, required a replay to separate them. That was the last time they drew in the championship, a draw here, and we're going to extra time. Certainly not much between the teams so far anyway. Sideline cut, struck by McInerney. No issue with distance, but like a bullet flies out to the left and wide. That's eight wides now for Clare. Just didn't have much control on, the, on that sideline ball, David McInerney. Normally very, very good with, from line balls. Patrick Collins picks out Sean O'Donoghue and his delivery to O'Flynn to meet. All very neat and tidy from Cork. Now they try to switch the play. Battered away back there by McInerney. Colin Galvin trying to knock it away to himself. Tripped as he tried to do so. This will be another chance for Tony Kelly. But Clare have got uh, four players out there who started the 2013 All-Ireland Final. Colin Galvin is one of them. And his foul there by Niall O'Leary has just earned the cornerback a yellow card. It was certainly a free, no doubt, but maybe a little bit harsh. He, he ultimately, I suppose, he tripped him with the hurley, so that's, strictly speaking, it is a yellow card, but it was... So it's Tony Kelly time again. Last year's all-star midfielder. Took no chances that time. He's up to five points now. The gap is back to one. Patrick Collins favouring this left side more often than not. Clear alive to it, reading, trying to spin away from two defenders. Managed to release the ball, but only to a Corkman. Mead to Fitzgibbon, midfielder to midfielder, and Dara Fitzgibbon from Charleville nails it. He was just inside his own half, and his first score was worth waiting for. Great score, but from a Cork perspective, they'd want to see Dara Fitzgibbon much more involved in the game than he has been. That's really his first real impact in it. Colum Galvin in scrapping for the break. Falls Cork's way. Robbie O'Flynn from Aaron's own. He's got Jeremy the Ryan after him and fouling him right in front of John Keenan. O'Flynn has worked incredibly hard in the first half an hour. A serious pace, Robbie O'Flynn, and he's heading for goals. And Jeremy Ryan really just holds him up. But, you know, Claire just you know, really at their limit in places. You know, Colin Galvin just before that, you know, he's just overreaching, overstretching the last couple of balls. You know, he did get the free off of. Niall O'Leary previously, but just struggling really to get the ball under control. Teams have shared six points evenly between them since the water break. No real momentum shift as such since we restarted. Rob Downey, the Cork fullback, was the player there who just needed some running repairs. So once more, it's Horgan who steps up. Didn't strike that cleanly, though. And that's a, a rare error from him today. And that's a seventh wide for Cork. A bit like the first three he took against Limerick and Torles. You know, he didn't strike it very well at all. You can hear the very poor sound off the strike. Luke Mead doing the unfashionable work. Down the line towards Kingston. Let it run to beat him and Conlon. Now he's got the goal in his sights. Conlon slips and Kingston... Pops it up and over the bar. First point for the man from Douglas. Yeah, that's the real danger of the Cork forwards, the pace, watching Kingston, John Conlon trying to get back, and then Kingston just doubles back around. But, you know, once they get space and they're able to run with the ball, they're very, very dangerous. So that Jack O'Connor goal now separates the teams as we swing in to the last three minutes of normal time. They're looking for Shanahan. They find Mark Rogers. That was Rob Downey, the Cork fullback, who's built like a basketballer, who popped up there to intercept. Patrick Collins will let this go along and let the Schlitter do the work in towards O'Connor. This time Hayes has got the run on him, but O'Connor recovered really well. A quick slide of hand, and he's got the ball under control again. Harnady comes off the shoulder. Harnady puts the boot down. Harnady's in, into the ground, and easy for Quilligan. Well, the goal was yawning. Harnady could see the whites of Quilligan's eyes, but just made a meal of it in the end. And Clare get off the hook. Conlon 
back to Malone. Jeremy the Ryan sets himself, and that's well wide. That's a very bad wide for from Dermot Ryan, but there to in Shami Hardy had a great chance here. Dermot Ryan, in fairness, I'd say he gets a little bit of a hook on it, and maybe Ever Quilligan concedes a 65, but Claire got away really with it. Should have been conceding a goal there from Shami Hardy. Tony Kelly breaks the tackle, but he's lashed that away and wide. And Clare now are up to 10. They're into double figures. Remember, they drove 22 against Waterford, and they do tend to get into these sort of runs. That yeah. will be the last thing Brian Lohan wants. We're going to have at least one minute of additional time. They've had too many wides all through their champion matches, but you wonder as well, coming up to half time, maybe whether the exertions of last week are telling on Clare just a little bit for the last few minutes. Three wides for Tony Kelly. Here's Kyle Malone. He's been scoring regularly lately, and he has struck that right on the sweet spot. Three points for the man from Six Mile Bridge, who's playing the hurling of his life in the summer of 2021. The exertions not telling on Kyle Malone, and just again when they need someone to step up and take responsibility, Cahill Malone not found wanting for Clare. Jeremy the Ryan climbs into the air to beat Robbie O'Flynn. He needs support, it comes from Malone. Cork put the pressure on, Clare get the line ball. It's a superb catch from Jeremy Ryan, watch that right up. That ball was really travelling over Robbie Flynn. Well, we've got the weather. We've got the atmosphere and we've got the game. This is championship in every sense of the word. Harnady to Kingston. There may be an opening. There's a man inside. It's Horgan. The pass, though, wasn't what he needed. It's Kingston! Oh, he's done it again. Shane Kingston, just like he did in Thurless in the Munster semi-final. He spins on a sixpence and whips it into the back of the net. When he gets into that position, it was fantastic. Shane Harnady again made it. Straight through to Kingston, he goes through. His initial hand pass across to Patrick Horgan isn't what he wanted, left it a bit short, but the ball breaks back to him. Horgan does well to get anything on it, and Shane Horgan very coolly finish, or Shane Kingston coolly finishes again. His second goal of the championship, his 10th in his Cork career, down at the other end. Clare respond immediately through Cullum Galvin. His first of the day. Great. What a game we have now. Yeah, great reply from Colin Galvin. He really has to score. He can't afford to, to, to let it drift wide on the right-hand side, and he surely does. There goes the half-time whistle. A chance for the hurlers of Cork and Clare to gather their breaths, gather their thoughts, and get their second wins on a day when the winners go through to the quarter-finals and the losers bow out. It is all to play for here at the LIT Gaelic Grounds. Cork goals from Jack O'Connor and Shane Kingston have put the Rebels in the driving seat. It's Cork 2-9, Clare 11 points. They're four points down, and their championship survival is on the line. Yeah, and maybe from their point of view, you know, they they could have conceded a couple of more goals. So as James, he said there, he'd be happy enough to see Clare only four points down. And and there is a slight breeze favouring Clare here in the second half. So still all to play for. Just in terms of first half possessions, by the way, Seamus Harnady with 11 handled more ball than any other player on the field. Cahill Malone with nine was the Clare man most involved as away we go second half is up and running and as Nicky said there's a, a slight breeze at Clare's backs Tony Kelly trying to make the most of it dropped short and gathered by Patrick Collins another stat that caught our eye at halftime just two of Clare's starting forward line have scored so far and one of them Ian Galvin has been taken off Tony Kelly the only Clare forward out there yet to hit the target. Mark Rogers looking to put that right. Across towards Shanahar, Collins to the rescue. Breaks to Cullum Galvin. Couldn't quite gather it. Aidan McCarthy's after it. 
McCarthy looking just to make up his mind. He takes on the shot. It's high, it's close, and the umpire's given it. Well, from our vantage point here, that looked very, very, very close, close, to say the least. least. But the score stands, and Clare will take it. Yeah, the wind held it up at the end, and you know it was very close, but it was a score Clare had to get after the amount of play they had put in. The puck out, won by David Reedy. And the chance is missed. David well, Reedy. Clare had the wind in their sails there, and they've just shot wide number 11. Yeah, great run by by Mark Rogers. He's passed across Darren Shannon, was a bit slow though, and Patrick Collins did very well to cut it out. The race is on here between Flanagan and Barrett. Flanagan looked like he got there first, but ball hit him on the way out. Let's take another look at that yeah, last what, chance yeah. for clear. Watch the hand pass from Rogers. It just a, hangs a little bit, and... Um, Patrick Collins does really well to, to clear it, but it's just there was a little bit more pace on that hand pass and was a certain goal for Aaron Shanahan. Dara Fitzgibbon he had just, just three possessions in the first half. He and Ger Millerick with the fewest on either side. Sideline cut, return to Fitzgibbon. And when he can shoot like that, maybe he doesn't need to be on too much ball. He's economical. He's Clare's lead, or Cork's lead rather, back to four. Yeah, he's a great player and tra you know, he travels and covers ground so easily. What a catch by Aidan McCarthy. Spins, shoots and scores. The epitome of efficiency. He's been very impressive in all the matches for Clare. I know he missed a couple in the first half, but his ball-winning ability, his work rate, and he, up to today, his accuracy, but he's had two, two shots of goals in the second half, two points. That's a first for McCarthy. He becomes the third Clare forward to score. David Reedy, just balancing the Schlitter on his hurley to Carl Malone. Pumps it towards Rogers. Patrick Collins takes it down and moves it away. Cher Millerick, he's got McCarthy after him. Here's Barrett on the run, and that's dropped short as well. Connor Cleary, Quilligan, just uh, took a moment to get back to his feet. Colm Galvin, nothing on short, he goes long. And this is the issue for Clare now. When they need scores, they're hitting wides, and they've hit a dozen now. They have to work a lot harder for their scores than, than Cork have at the other end, and you know, Colm Galvin really, he just needed to hold on to it there. It was, again, he didn't hit it with any great conviction. Well, the play stopped here as the clear goalkeeper, Aver Quilligan, just needed some attention briefly. Picked up a, a bang in that last passage of play. Patrick Collins gets us restarted. Man trying to cut through here is Robbie O'Flynn. Uses his pace, uses his power, and takes the point. A lot more options for Cork. A lot more players capable of taking the score, winning the ball. And Robbie O'Flynn, again, look, watch, once he gets it, he's danger all, all over him, and he's very, very fast and makes a lot of space for himself to take an easy point. Cork lead back to four. Downey went highest. This is Ryan Taylor using those quick feet to Tony Kelly out near the sideline. The angle's tight. Tony Kelly. One of the few players in the country who could dig out a score like that. Six for him, 14 for Clare, and they haven't gone away. Reminiscent of a point he got against Tipperary here in the Munster Championship, right on the edge again. Well, Cork have won five of the last six championship matches these counties have played since that famous 2013 All-Ireland Final. They've had the upper hand most days. They've met in big games, be it in Thurless or across Munster. And right now, it's those first half goals that give them some precious breathing space. You know Clare have great 
spirit and, and work ethic going. They're they're going to hang in there, and if the longer they hang in there, the better chance they have in the game. So, you know, Cork need to keep that gap at three point at least. Tim O'Mahony, did he hit it? Yes, he did. O'Mahony feels he deserved a second chance. Tony Kelly nips in, and Tony Kelly makes it count. Well, Tim O'Mahony is absolutely furious with the linesman, Liam Gordon, down here underneath us, as is Kieran Kingston. They felt O'Mahony hadn't hit that ball. It, it looked like it moved a little touch. Maybe it was, maybe it was a bit of grass or something behind it, but the, ref, the linesman and referee judged that he had touched the ball, and uh, Tony Kelly was left to it, but certainly controversial. Well, they say championship is often down to small margins. They don't get any smaller or finer than that. Looked like a breath of wind that moved the Schlitter. Fair get the point. And Connor Cleary again in the thick of the action in front of his own goal. Two between the teams now. As Conlon whips it up into the Cork half of the field. Rogers is after it. Well, don't know who wins the foot race. And Collins, Patrick Collins, the Cork goalkeeper, is calmness personified as he gets it away to Rob Downey. And Cork will build it from the back again. This is Dara Fitzgibbon in full flight. Taylor, though, is after him. And Taylor manages to pick his pocket, and Ryan gets it away to Galvin. And Clare managed to break up that attack. Now at the other end, it's Mark Coleman, the sweeper, doing what he does best. Away, it's Tim O'Mahony. It's end-to-end. -end. It's breathless stuff. Luke Mead is after this. There's a pocket of space for him to run into. Galvin's after him. Luke Mead shortens the grip. Lovely hurling by Cork. And Luke Mead, with his first point, restores the three-point cushion. Great pace again by Cork, and Luke Mead covered huge ground up along the right-hand side here. And he hasn't takes a look when he gets the ball. He's half thinking of a goal, but just takes the easy point. But up at the other side, we saw the previous ball in from Clare. And Aaron Shanahar, he seems to be right corner forward with, with Rodgers at, at full forward, right in front of the goals. And this is the way they were set up in the first half. And I, I just wonder whether Shanahar could be better off in, in right in the centre. The break won by Reedy. Kelly was on the move. Lovely flick towards Shanahar. The Cork Cavalry arrive in. They swarm around Shanahar, O'Donoghue, Coleman, Millerick, and one of them has overstepped the mark, and Shanahar's dug out of free. Initially, John Keenan was going to let this play on. I thought Aaron Shanahar was found fouled fairly early in, in the game here. Watch, seems to be held up. Maybe not, but he did well actually then to. To retrieve possession and you can see there uh, Sean O'Donoghue who was holding his hand for a finish Clare playing their fourth game in five weeks and yet they're still digging deep into their reserves of energy and stamina and now they have a chance Kelly well Cork weren't taking any chances. They had brought reinforcements back onto the line. Kelly knocks over his eighth point. Yeah, I see Tony encouraging the rest of the player players after that point. And um, game right, right near the melting pot. You know, nothing between these teams. Just seems that one, one side at Corker just gave the score a little bit easier than Clare, but still very hard to call. Sean O'Donoghue is the Cork defender there, who's looking uh, a bit worse for the weather. And Brian Lohan uses this break and play to get some messages in. Yeah, well, Brian Lohan has, you know, have to be very proud of the way the team has played all through the championship. And you know, from the Kilkenny match on in the league, they really have Im improved and you know they've given everything. Tony Kelly off his left onto his right. Kelly still going. The freeze given, Kelly had hit the point. John Keenan is just consulting with the umpire, he's going to give it. And that's worth so much more to Clare, and Kelly knows it, and Clare know it, and the crowd know it too. And Patrick Collins is left to shake his head. A moment of sheer magic from TK, the Clare number 11, one point between them. Now you could say it was a wonderful advantage, which it was but the whistle really probably had been gone. But certainly, he deserved to get his score, Tony Kelly, because it's fantastic work. Well, his engine is running now. Four points in a row for the Clare playmaker. 
Niall O'Leary is having to dig deep into his box of tricks to try and keep tabs on Kelly. Sideline cut to Clare, Rory Hayes from the Wolfstone Clubs in Shannon. Backpedalling, Ger Millerick manages to win it. Shut down very quickly, but Cork have an extra man. That's a loose clearance, though. David McInerney just slipped at the crucial moment. Robbie O'Flynn goes soloing through to Tim O'Mahony. Goes down under the challenge, and he's won himself a free. Cahill Malone pleading for leniency. O'Mahony has got what he came for. But he's definitely going to get a free. The best Cahill Malone can hope for is not to pick up a yellow card. Um, again, the, the pace of the Cork attack and Tim O'Mahony supporting. But it all came from a great chance maybe for David McInerney to intercept the ball and carry it up the other way. But he just he's, he slipped just at the vital moment. Patrick Horgan, he's been hurling at this level for 14 seasons. He's been there and he's done that. And he's now up to seven points. Down at the other end, Ger Millerick called into action. Learning his trade on the job. The wing back from Father O'Neill's gets it down the line. Kingston's after it. Hayes with him. Not quite sure where he got his energy from there, Rory Hayes. Away to David McInerney. Carl Malone into the space, but nobody in a clear jersey inside the 45. Across comes Sean O'Donoghue. And the corner back from Inish Gara can pick out Horgan, who's gone deep. Here's Jack O'Connor. His first instinct is to take on whoever's in his way. O'Connor's gone through. Side netting. Well, it touched a clear hurley on its way out. It will be a 65. But Jack O'Connor in full flight is a sight to behold. That's Colin Galvin behind him there, and he's just leaving him for dead. Unbelievable pace. Watch this. He has to hit it off the hurley, which he does pretty well. And it's Connor Cleary actually that gets back to, to push it around the post. Well, he moved up through the gears there effortlessly, Jack O'Connor. And Conor Cleary, as Nicky said, with the crucial goal-saving intervention. Real danger for Cork every time Jack O'Connor gets the ball and could easily have three goals scored today. Well, he thinks goals, he scores goals. Five this season already. Here's Patrick Horgan and there's another score. Eight points. Four frees, two 65s, and two from play. And Cork just about able to maintain that three-point gap. They're just keeping clear at arm's length as Quilligan finds Hayes. He's looking for the run of Shanaher. What a battle he and Rob Downey are having as well. Downey parachuted in to the Cork team after Damien Cahalan had to have his appendix removed during the week. And yeah, it's a big test for him. And Damon Cahillan had been playing very well in all the Cork matches, so he was a huge loss. But Robert Downey is doing very well, and Aaron Shanahan is not an easy opponent. Dara Fitzgibbon, 2018 All-Star. Needed a second bite at that. He won't be waiting for Tony Kelly to come in before he gets a second shot of it. That is for sure, as Flanagan... Tries to pick out the one Clare man who's made a run for him. That was Mark Rogers. Ball carries past him. And Sean O'Donoghue will bide his time and bring Patrick Collins into the game. Across to Ger Millerick. Millerick has looked very well in, in the second half and all through the game. Certainly going very well for a man who missed last season due to injury. Luke Mead. Needs to improvise. A lot of movement ahead of him. He goes for Harnady. Jamie Harnady. Lovely quick change of direction to lose a defender or two. But the shot is away. Now, Jamie Harnady is claiming that 
and Claire Hurley caught it on its way through. He's trying to convey that message to the linesman, Sean Clear, and the referee. Neither interested, but perhaps justice done. The Clare fuck out has gone uh, awry. I'm not sure that Shaney Harley was, wasn't claiming they went over the bar. The referee or the umpire didn't make any signal whatsoever. Well, we don't have Hawkeye, of course, here at the NIT Gaelic grounds. Jamie Harnady, I think, yeah, did feel it went over. Not given. Well, it's... Aver Quilligan wasn't waiting around with the puck out. He was getting it out very quickly and um, actually overhit David McInerney, so Cork of a line ball as well. So Brian Lohan is replacing a substitute with a substitute. Shane Golden is in. And has won four county championships with Six Mile Bridge, and it's Mark Rogers who's coming out. So Claire trying to switch things up and freshen things up in their attack. Here is Golden involved right from the get go. Space at a premium. That was a loose swing of the hurley by Sean O'Donoghue, and he's caught Tony Kelly right in front of the linesman. And Sean O'Donoghue now may have a case to answer here. Yeah, a lot of pressure on the ball. I think Tony Kelly slips actually first, and um, Sean O'Donoghue does hit him on the, on the hurley, but it, or on the helmet. But I think he's look, Tony Kelly has actually fallen down into it, and um, I have some sympathy with Sean O'Donoghue in that instance. But a lot of pressure, Cork applying on the ball here now, and Clare struggling to get possession, and you know, they're really under pressure now. So no card, but the fee is given. Kelly, he was young hurler and uh, overall hurler of the year in 20. I suppose Sean O'Donnell does have to get a card, he's got a yellow one. So a yellow for Sean O'Donoghue. John Keenan there just letting things settle down. I think he may have grabbed a quick word with his linesman. Eventually, Tony Kelly takes the free, and that's now 10 points for him. Six from freeze, four from play, and still just two between them. Well, there is the signal for the water break. Cork and Clare delighted to see it and hear it. It has been an energy-sapping third quarter. Let's head to the panel and hear from Ollie and JJ. Ed McCarthy had a, a great start there for this clear team, two points from, from play, and then Tony Kelly has took over since he's, he's winner free. He's, he scored an unbelievable score off, the, off his left hand side, just right in front of Brian Lawn. He lifted the whole clear team, but Cork seemed to ha have the measure of it. Um, they're coming back. I think, I think Luke Bede in the middle of the field, he, he's so efficient on the ball, he, he never panics. He's making the whole thing tick for uh, for this Cork team as well. He's playing lovely ball into Seamus Harrody, Jack O'Connor as well. So if Clare are going to get on top in the last 15, 20 minutes, they're going to have to stop uh, Luke Bede from letting from defence into attack together. Yeah, look, and since half time, I think Clare, it's probably a worrying point for Clare. They've only had two scores with Aidan McCarthy and Tony Kelly. Now, it's great to see Tony you know, powering into the game there with points from play and from freeze. I think there's a better spread in the Cork team. I think the Cork forwards are breaking down that clear defence. I think Jack O'Connor's pace is causing them a lot of problems. And I think there's a bigger goal threat uh, still from the Cork inside forward line than the Clare inside forward line. And for me, I think Cork are just doing enough uh, to, to stay ahead here. Thank you, JJ. Thank you, Ollie. We'd just like uh, at this juncture as well to apologize for any interference you may be experiencing in terms of the sound, the audio coming to you from the LIT Gaelic grounds. Just a few glitches in the system at the moment. But as we get ready, to get back down to business ahead of this fourth and final quarter, Nicky English. Still a very hard game to call. Still all to play for, still only the, the two points that were in it at half time. You know, both sides having periods of dominance, but no, no, no team really able to take over. Well, Clare won that third quarter, seven points to five, despite their 
reliance on Tony Kelly for scores. He's just had 12 possessions in the match. He's delivered 10 points. That was really cleverly done by Mark Coleman. Still trying to keep this Cork move alive. Players from both sides looking to dig it out eventually. Finds its way to David Reedy from the Aero Oak Club in Ennis. Shane Kingston is after it. Reedy bounces it back to himself, and David Reedy would not take no for an answer. He's got great drive, great determination, and Shane Kingston has eventually fouled him. Yeah, there's this, that never say the ice spirit we've seen from Clare this season. And Reedy, you know, he really has to hold on to the ball. There's no options in front of him, and eventually he turns back into Shane Kingston, who is the hurling in his left hand, and uh, draws the foul. It's that man again, and it is the result everybody expected. He's really powered into the game, Tony Kelly was, you know, in the first half he was under pressure, Niall O'Leary was having the best of it, but Kelly really since half-time has been the dominant force here. Six points in a row from Tony Kelly, the gap is back to the bare minimum. That was a big win by Harnady, who juggles it, pops it through, Kingston got a touch. Clare scrambling bodies back around the ball. Paul Flanagan somehow manages to dig it out, gets it to Conlon. And Carl Malone will lift the siege and relieve the pressure. But only momentarily. Aaron Shanahan there caught on his heels, and Sean O'Donoghue will once more use the goalkeeper, Patrick Collins, who comes out to help out his full back line. The direct approach from Cork this time, Harnady just got a crucial touch. Runners move into position. Harnady goes it alone, and Shamey Harnady away to the right. He had options, that is away for a ninth Cork wide. Shamey Harnady is getting loads of possession and really doing very, very well up to a point, but his shooting is just spoiling the whole thing for him. I mean, he'd be, he'd be a totally dominant force except for the wides he's been hitting. So fresh legs come in for Clare, Jack Brown, two-time All-Ireland under-21 winner, replaces Colum Galvin, who's got nothing left to give. Here's another of the Clare subs, Shane Golden, who pumps his fist into the air. What a way to make your introduction. The sides are level here at the LIT Gaelic grounds, thanks to that magnificent score from Shane Golden. He made it look easy, that's right on the sideline, but you can hear it just how the, the sound of the strike was absolutely perfect and straight between the poles. David McInerney, every ball now, precious, priceless, and so hard won. Aidan McCarthy, the man from Ina Kilnamona, hasn't got a chance to cut loose, but back making some hard yards. It's Carl Malone. Jeremy the Ryan has found a pocket of space. Ryan, normally so deadly from that sort of range, pops up with his first score. And you can see the clear supporters here. They're really behind the team, and you know, as Cork now really have to fight for it. And this is where the, the, the questions will be asked of Cork. We saw him against Limerick. You know, do, do they become out of move from being a promising team to be real contenders? The question is, is placed for him here now because Clare are really up in the ante here for Cork. That's now four in a row for Clare. The momentum has swung. The pendulum now very much swinging in their favour. Kieran Kingston, as you'll have seen there a moment ago, has pitched in Conor Cahalan to try and get his misfiring attack moving again. But Cork now are in a real battle. Their three-week lead into this game. Will that prove crucial down the home straight? Can they use their pace to unlock this Clare backline? It's Barrett. And that is some intervention from John Conlon. He waited and then he pounced 65. You have the pace of Barrett, but Conlon stays with him, doesn't foul him, and just moves the ball off his hurley, but concedes a 65 to Horgan. This is, 
this game is everything we, we'd hope for, really. You know, the, you see the pace of Cork, they look dangerous. You know, Jack O'Connor particularly, but, you know, Clare are really the great spirit, great work rate, and they're really attacking Cork now with everything. So Patrick Horgan with the 65. It hasn't gone to plan. He's just having some issues with his free taking and his long range efforts off the ground. His technique is just letting him down here and there. Well, you saw just at the other side, Tony Kelly has got better and better from his freeze as the game has gone on and the more important the freeze has become and that one is a bad miss by Patrick Horgan. So Alan Connolly from the county champions is in for just his second championship appearance as Aidan McCarthy somehow manages to squeeze that shot in. It would have been some score. Instead, it's away and wide. 13 misses for Brian Lohan's Clare. You could cut the tension with a knife right now. Conor Cahalan dispossessed. Brought the ball into traffic and left without it. Ball released quickly to Shane Golden. Confidence high, but it's another missed opportunity for Clare. Two in a row. Yeah, and that's sometimes the problem with Clare to Clare over the last few matches. You know, they shoot have maybe on sight too much. Shane Golden and Aidan McCarthy with the previous effort. Maybe they'd be better off just to hold and recycle those balls. But Clare have hit eight of the last 11 scores we've had in this match. They've also pucked a few bad wides. Is this to be Cork's time? That's a really well taken score. He's not long in off the bench, Alan Connolly. Yeah, this is a guy I expected to see in the championship. We only saw him for two minutes against Limerick, but he's made a big impression in the county championship. And Cork have high hopes for Alan Connolly, but that's a good, good, great score there. Well, he's made a name for himself as a goal scorer, took that point neatly. Sides all square, deadlocked for the seventh time in this qualifier at the LIT Gaelic grounds. Nothing to separate them right now as Paul Flanagan strolls back into the corner. Links up here with Jack Brown. One Ballier man to another. Barrett put the pressure on. Clare have lost the ball. Harnady right into the hand of Shane Barrett. And the man who lit up that All-Ireland Under-20 final a couple of weeks ago steps up to the plate here in the Senior Championship and delivers the lead score. His hard work is rewarded because he put the pressure on Jack Brown to, to create the mistake in the first place. So Shane Barrett from Blarney puts Cork back in front. Aidan McCarthy there with the hook on Fitzgibbon. Ryan Taylor looking for his first score and obliging. What a game we're having here. Dara Fitzgibbon, you know, the pace of him, but they get the hook on him. It comes to Ryan Taylor, he has Tony Kelly riding shotgun with him if he wants to, but he takes the shot on himself and over the bar. Well, yet again, it is the championship that just keeps on giving. We're into the last eight minutes here in Limerick. Here's Mark Coleman, turns away in frustration and disgust. He knew he hadn't struck it cleanly. Game has restarted already. Aver Quilligan trying to get the pressure on the Cork full back line. Patrick Collins, the 24-year-old Cork goalkeeper. Outside to Luke Mead. Lovely ball. Into the hand of Harnady. Tries to push off Ryan. Makes an angle. And Shamie Harnady with a trademark score. His second. And it just gives Cork that little bit of breathing space again. He deserved that score. Jamie Harney has been outstanding in the possession stakes for, for Cork all day. He's been worked up, he's worked up and down the field. Shanahar. That was really good play by Rob Downey. Cork have put in 44 tackles, declares 35. But it really is, by and large, every man for himself now with six and a half minutes to play. 
that All-Ireland quarter-final place still there for the taking. Sean O'Donoghue looking to service Alan Connolly. Good first touch. Recycled to Horgan. And Patrick Horgan. High. Was it over? The umpires concur and the score is given. Well, no wonder he needs a drink. Patrick Horgan nudges Cork two ahead. Yeah, but Connolly did well. Just held up possession, recycled it to Horgan and right inside the post. Cork now hitting a bit of a purple patch. They've hit four of the last five points. Clare throwing in another fresh forward. It's Gary Cooney, the man who scored the goal against Wexford last weekend. And it's Aaron Shanaher who's being replaced. Yeah, he just hasn't had the impact that the player would have hoped for. Ball runs through to Ryan Taylor. He's got the beating of the first defender. One man in the middle. He's picked him out. It's Cooney! Stopped by Collins. Well, Gary Cooney, just like he did against Wexford, found himself in on goal, but this time, Collins was equal to the shot. It looked like it was deja vu from last week. And it was actually Downey that got the... I thought Downey got the block on it. And Downey has been outstanding all day. He's completely snuffed out Aaron Shanahan and he comes to Cork's rescue there. Well, credit where it's due. Rob Downey from Glen Rover has made himself as big as possible. He's a, a big man anyway. Standing around six foot five, the Cork fullback. As Harnady goes in acrobatically to win this. He's lost McInerney. They're hunting another goal. Oh, what a finish! Shane Barrett. What a time to score your first senior championship goal. Shane Barrett from Blarney. And now you see Shane Harney with a bit of confidence. Look, he could take the easy point, but no. Experience. Barrett. Bang. What a goal. And that's, you know, that's creating space all year. They've been looking for goals, and that's the, they have the players to score them. It was made by Harnady, it was finished by Shane Barrett. 1-1 one, one. since he came in off the bench. Rory Hayes, the clear man, is down and in need of attention. But Cork have opened up a five-point lead with the finish line in sight. And we waited for so long in this second half for their attack to catch fire. Have they timed their run to perfection? Well, Claire have asked them the big questions, really. They really have put it up to them in this... In this second fourth quarter and you know we, we've seen clear at the other end had a chance rob downey stood up big blocked it and down the other end you know harnady has come right into the game he's been good all day but in a scoring sense he's really improved and creates a great chance for, for barrett but it's not over yet but but clear have really to score very very quickly now and they have to get a couple of points at the very least very quickly Well, we're hearing that Jack O'Connor has just been booked for the second time for an off-the-ball incident, and he's been sent off. So Cork down to 14 men. Well, just when we thought we couldn't have any more drama, any more excitement, Clare will have an extra man for the last few minutes. They chase down a five-point deficit, and it's not over yet. Certainly not over yet, but again, Harnady on the ball, shown for the ball, shown his experience, and... Conlon fouls him from behind. But Jack O'Connor, you know, he, he, he picked up a ridiculous, stupid yellow card, really, by, from a late challenge on John Conlon early on in the game and has, has paid for it now. So a stoppage here. Cork, I think, just trying to check any momentum. Clare might be thinking of building. Also looking to get reorganised now. Clare will have a, a spare man for this run down the home straight. Millerick it was who took a knee there, needed a moment. Here's Horgan right over the black spot. Ten points for the core captain. So Cork lead by six. The biggest advantage they had in the first half was five points. So this is the Greatest amount of clear blue water they've had between themselves and the banner. Harnady here now has a 
a few apologies to make, I think, to the referee, and it's a yellow. Yeah, no matter how many apologies he's going to make, he's going to get a, get a yellow card for that. So Harnady in the book. Cork have hit a rapid-fire 1-3 without reply in the last five or six minutes, and it has swung this game very definitely back in their favour. Clare's batteries, you'd imagine, will have to be drained after those four games in five weeks. Kelly with the free. He wasn't happy with it. 17 wides for Clare. Nicky, let's uh, jump in at this stage. Who's your Little Was Ireland man of the match? Been a tough choice, but I've gone for Seamus Harnady because, you know, he's he has stayed at it. He had, he had plenty of wides, but he has more possessions or as many possessions as any Cork player. When they were under pressure, he started showing for the ball. Got, got on the score sheet and then created probably what might be the winning goal for Shane Barrett. So, Shamie Harnady is the man of the match. So, Shamie Harnady from the St. Eda's Club in East Cork is Nicky's selection. Right now, it looks like Harnady and Cork are headed for the All Ireland quarterfinals, particularly with that miss from Ryan Taylor just to add to Claire's worries. Kieran Kingston is bringing in Thig DC just to again keep Clare's backline guessing this will be his championship debut and it's the man of the match Jamie Harnady who's being called ashore much like his old self today and that pass for Barrett's goal will be remembered for many years to come yeah and I think Kieran Kingston will be most happy with the way Cork have stood up when when the questions were asked by Clare here at the, in the fourth quarter Clare really put it up to him but Cork have come out with all guns blazing themselves and, and, and look to have great, got a good victory here. So we'll have at least three minutes of additional time. Three minutes for Cork to see this out. Three minutes for Clare to save their summer. Rory Hayes turns on to his left and Rory Hayes, just like he did against Wexford and Tip, pops up with a point. Bill Cooper from Yall is coming in. Kieran Kingston now rolling his bench constantly. It's been a, an energy sapping, draining day for both teams. And Dara Fitzgibbon is the man who's called the short. Yeah, their bench looks strong, and um, I'm impressed with the, with the impact, particularly of Alan Connolly. He's done very, very well since he's come on. One of the Cork subs there, Alan Connolly, trying to come across and win it. Instead, it's cut out by a clear man, and Carl Malone will release it long. Great take inside. All eyes on the referee here. It's a penalty, surely. It was uh, Tony Kelly who did the hard part, won the delivery, brought down in the square. Niall O'Leary's already on a yellow card. So and he's just got a black and a black and a yellow he's got them all <laughs> and it's a red he's got the full house <laughs> well John Keenan very nearly threw the book at him there but the bottom line yeah, is that he's been sent to the line his day is done and we have a penalty to clear and to Tony Kelly we're in the third minute of additional time Kelly against Collins goal there never really was any doubt Cork not home yet at least probably at least another minute of play maybe given the amount of substitutes that have been brought on here so Clare will get another chance and right now Clare with two extra men two points down 15 seconds left in additional time well you really couldn't write this script It's all now at the discretion of the referee, John Keenan. Clare need two points to send this to extra time, a goal to win it. Jeremy Ryan, up into the clouds it goes. Can Cork's backline stand firm? Nerves jangling back there now. Rob Downey couldn't make it stick. It's Kelly, the right man. Kelly, brilliant save by Collins, who stood his ground, diverts it away from danger. 
fouled on his way out was Conor Callan. <laughs> what a Patrick here. Collins stood in Tony Kelly's path. And thou shalt not pass, said Collins. What a great save by Patrick Collins. He stood up. Clare got the chance to score the goal to win the game. And it fell to the right man, Tony Kelly. But Patrick Collins is equal to it. And Bill, Co Bill Cooper now. Cork try to see it out, Bill Cooper will go down maybe one more play at ma maximum in the game Well we wondered if this game would live up to some of the great past battles between Cork and Clare in the championship, it most certainly did and Tony Kelly you can see his mind racing he's the one man Clare would have wanted in that position and when he cut through he had one thing in his mind and Patrick Collins yeah, he stood up, stood tall, and made that save. Yeah, he covered the, he covered the, the near post very, very well, and it's a win and save. It's all over, and Clare's championship is over. It ends here on a dramatic, action-packed, sun-drenched day at the LIT Gaelic grounds. They could have given no more, but Cork remains standing. They have answered every question they were asked today. And it has finished here after a frantic, frenetic, and breathtaking game. Cork, 319, Clare, 123. Next weekend, we are live with one of the All-Ireland Hurling quarterfinals to be played next Saturday. Check out skysports.com forward slash GEA for details in the days ahead. There will, of course, be a draw to decide who will be playing who in the All-Ireland quarterfinals. But it is Cork who are through to that coveted quarterfinal spot and a scoreline of 319 to 123. Yeah, what a game. We've been blessed by the games that we've seen here today from Semple Stadium and LIT um, Gaelic grounds. Like six points up, it looked like Cork were going to go through that. I mean, massive credit to Clare the way they came back, Ali, but just some of your overall sen sense of that second half there. Yeah, I felt the game, I and mean, even we spoke at halftime, it took the game a while to warm up because of maybe some missed chances, but like it really it really came to life in the second half. We thought, you know, Clare, Cork had the the goal scoring threat and they got that goal coming down the home stretch to put them six six ahead I think it was at the time and we felt then the Cork would see it out then we had the the, the sending offs uh, we had a sin bin we had Tony Kelly coming back up with a free and then that last chance I mean I couldn't believe it looking at the scoreboard that you know Claire were only two points down at that stage and what a great save um, you know to, to deny Tony Kelly um, and as, as Mike said there on commentary you know, who, who did you want in that position? Only Tony and the goal he stood up, uh, you know, really to that shot. And what a finish. What, what a grandstand finish we've had to both games today. Yeah, they've been fantastic. And, and let's just start from the beginning of that second half and Tony Kelly. Like, he was immense today for, for Clare. Yeah, he was absolutely brilliant. He was all over the field. Like, you know, he's, he's just... When he's must, he always stands up for clear. Whatever he does, he, he just doesn't go hiding. Again, off the right hand side, over the side, and this nearly like a trademark Tony Kelly scoring at the moment, but he just doesn't score any points in front of goal, just always gets there. And this one, he took a gamble on it. He wasn't waiting around for Tim and Manny to hit it the second time and straight over the bar on his right hand side. He's just so naturally gifted on both sides. He's a joy to watch, and the problem is now we won't we'll have a chance without Tony Kelly in it, which that would happen less than it. But again, Great score, Clare. This is a huge score for Clare, right in front of Brian Lone and your know, Tally's man. And, uh, look again, everything good about Clare Hurling. He, he epitomised this brilliant, brilliant game in the second half. When these must, he stood up. Yeah, he really stood up, and he and he always st stands up. But just a, a credit, I suppose, for Cork as well, Ali, because then the questions were being asked as the lads were saying in commentary off this Cork defence, off this Cork attack. How are they going to respond? And and the finish they got, Ali, talk us through that. Yeah, and again, you know, the bench is so important in these games, and we always say, you know, the team that finishes needs to be strong. Adam Connolly there came off the bench and a great score. And uh, we see here again, Shane Barrett actually worked really hard. Uh, you know, maybe caused that that turnover there, and then what a strike, you know. Just coming off the bench you know are you warmed up enough but to be able to sc strike scores like that it's just unbelievable and then another one out here Shami Harnady he you know goes to go on the inside and then cuts back outside and a great finish from Shami Harnady I mean he worked really hard today as well got on a lot of ball he won't be overly happy with his shooting at times but um, you know came good in the end and then here's another one uh, it's back out to Patrick Corgan 
and Patrick Hogan again. Had a couple of misses, but very, very good overall from play and from freeze today. Excellent. OK, well, Seamus Harnady, of course, was the player of the match and Littlewood's Ireland man of the match. He's speaking with Shane Dawson. Seamus Harnady, congratulations. You are today's Littlewood's Ireland man of the match. Unfortunately, you have to present yourself with the awards. Shane, it's probably the easiest thing you'll do all day. Congratulations, true to an All-Ireland semi-final. How do you reflect on that Cork's performance? Yeah, a bit of a roller coaster. Uh, like, she's in fairness to Clare, never died in the end. And only for Pat Collins making a last second save, we would have been out of the championship. And we were six points up and into injury time. So uh, that's something to reflect upon, uh, I suppose. Look, a lot of things went wrong, including myself. You know, should have had a goal in the first half. Had a few wides at the start of the second half. But in fairness, we, we stuck to our guns, you know, in our game plan. And thankfully it paid off. You know, it wasn't easy down to 13 towards the end. Uh, very, very hard day out there with conditions. It was absolutely blistering heat. You know, a lot of fellas going down with cramps. But look, all that matters is they're into the quarterfinal now and it's on to next week. You know, we're going to have to put, put tomorrow behind us very, very quickly and drive on again. But look, just thrilled. We'd be young enough group, but by God, did they stand up when we needed it today? And look, that's going to definitely stand them in the coming years and just thrilled to be part of this group. Was that the most important thing to really see the match out in terms of remaining, sticking to your game plan, remaining composed, bringing in that experience? Yeah, look, to be honest, it was so, you know, with down to 13 minutes or 13 men at the end, you know, things went a little bit out the window, but in fairness, their back stayed solid as a unit. And again, it came down to the last line of defence pad, you know, to keep us in the championship. Look, you need a bit of luck from time to time, and we may have rode it a small bit today, but it's great, we're into the next round, we're into the quarterfinal, and that's all that matters. Yeah, certainly credit to the goalkeeper, but in terms of the goal chances, you had one yourself, you made an exceptional assist as well, and, and a couple of young lads really came through as well. Was it a, a bit of a game plan going for goals today? Ah, uh, yeah, come here, um, something we focused on throughout the league and maybe got, got away from a small bit against Limerick, but uh, look, in fairness to Shane Barrett and Shane Kingston, their movement was pivotal for the goals, look, and they, they took them with a plum, you know. Shane Barrett especially was a class goal at the end and when it was badly needed. Look, they're in a better position. It's all about the team. It's not about me, you know. But uh, look, just delighted, as I said, and we move on. An open draw now, Tipper Dublin. Who would you prefer? Ah, uh, look, come here. Every team that's left in it, I think there's only six teams left. Every one of them are there in March, you know, and uh, it's anyone's on any given day. So look, we just have to drive on and, and, and take whoever, you know, comes out of the ball. Gentlemen, James, well done today. Thanks very much. Cheers. Is important to that core cause and the you know deserve a man of the match today. Now, a couple of things I want to look at, and from a clear perspective, I felt they were under pressure all day from Cork. I mean, Dave McInerney almost turned over by Shane Kingston, has to work so hard. Again, it's up the line, pressure again from Tim O'Mahony. Clare almost turned over. Aidan McCarthy here again, more pressure. And Clare just had to work so much harder for their scores. But when they got through the lines, you know, they, they, they did manage to, to engineer some really good opportunities. And we spoke before the game about these attacking wing backs. Dermot Ryan has come forward from his position. And this was a massive score because I think this put Clare ahead at a time when they'd really hung in and Cork, for the most part, had, had, had the better of it. And Clare, as I said, getting the rewards. And Dermot Ryan, who fought manfully throughout, getting up to get a great scare. And that put, that put Clare one ahead. But it was ding dong to the end, and I suppose it really came down to, I suppose, in the way hurling matches often do, you know, a save at one end or a miss at one end and a chance at the other. Now, Ryan Taylor does brilliantly here, gets it across to Gary Cooney, and this guy's a finisher. This guy in clear will be noted as the guy that you'd want, you know, to have the ball in his hand, and you're assuming he's going to stick that in the back of the net. But credit to Rob Downey here. This is last gasp defending, gets a hurley up, gets a block on the ball, an unbelievable stop, and even better again. It's deflected off Cooney's hurley and it goes out for a wide and clear actually get nothing get nothing out of it. Now, seconds later at the other end, Harley gets the ball, loses Connor Cleary. Now, Shane Barrett's movement is really good. He's going to peel off down the line here. Harley is going to come infield and to all intents and purposes, it looks like Harley's Harry, going to put the ball over the bar. But this is the change in the Cork mindset this year. You know, they're that more aware. They're looking if more is on. And Barrett... Gets the ball from Harrity, and from there on, he's only one thing in his mind, Everquillican coming out, no chance, and he rockets that shot into the net. So the game really swinging, you know, on the chance that Cooney missed at one end, Barrett converting at the other, and that looked like to have put the game away. But credit to Clare, they hung in there. Kelly obviously got the goal from the penalty that gave them a lifeline, and as the lads in the studio said, and Nicky said on commentary, who else would you want with the ball in their hand in the game of the line? Only Tony Kelly, and credit to Pat Collins for a super save, putting his body on the line at the other end, other end of the field. So, great drama, and a cracking 70 minutes entertainment, and credit to both teams.
credit of both teams is right. And as you as you said there, James, it was late drama. Let's have a look, lads, at that late drama because at this stage, Claire, we're just throwing everything at Cork. Yeah, exactly. And then it comes out of the fence here for Claire. Um, I think it goes long here into Tony Kelly. Uh, Tony is pulled down here. I think it was Niall O'Leary. The referee had judged that you know, he was the last defender back, uh, took Tony to the ground and then gave Tony the shot. Look, we've seen Tony Kelly in this position many, many times and what a strike uh, to the goal he's left. He just roofed it there. Uh, no, a great strike on his left hand side. So, uh, really brought Claire back into it. And then we have this again. Tony gets inside, uh, takes on his man. And what a save. I mean, it was a really, really solid strike. And then Claire or Cork, I mean, they scrambled, scrambled hard got the ball out, and that was pretty much it for the day. So um, credit to Cork defence. They, they, they stood up manfully there with only two points up. Um, and you never, you, never go into the la you never like to go into the last couple of minutes like that with a two-point lead because it's always very, very dangerous. I think Cork will learn a lot more from the last five minutes as well. There's no point in seeing out the game by six or eight points. Um, a lot of questions were asked of that Cork team there as well. And, and Robert Downey made a brilliant block. And, and Collins made a brilliant block there as well. But they were, as a collective, they were defending that last last ball. There was two or three Cork that's going to attack in that ball. So they'll, that give them a huge amount of confidence going forward as well. What questions did they answer for you today, Cork? I thought they, they emptied their bench at the right time there as well. They got probably 1-3 one, one, or 1-4 one, from the bench as well. But it made a huge difference when they did come on. Um, again, unfortunately, Bill Cooper went off injured there as well. It seems to be bad enough for injury. But again, the, the likes of Alan Connolly, Shane Barrett coming off the bench made a huge, huge difference. Yeah, I, I think coming into the game, uh, you know, people would have questioned what what Cork team is going to show up today will we see the fast running the pace they definitely brought that they caused Claire lots of problems at the back uh, Jack O'Connor in particular I was really impressed with him and as JJ said the bench had a big impact for Cork today so it'll get a bit of consistency back in um, and the management and players will take a lot of confidence from that Jamesy, did Cork play the way you expected them to play and how impressed were you by them? Really impressed and really impressed at the, the goal opportunities that they created and the engineers and they, you know, okay, they, they took three of them, but they created three or four other, you know, guilt edge opportunities. Um, and that's the that's the positive thing from, from Kieran Kingston, the Cork management's perspective, you know, that they're creating these opportunities and they now have time obviously to, to work on, on making sure they take a higher percentage of them. You know, I said at the start, of our program today, Grani, that I felt that potentially Cork have the highest ceiling of any of the four teams because they have a lot of pace, they have a lot of athleticism, the type of things that you need in Croke Park, and they're 70 minutes away now from the All Ireland semi final. Um, you know, obviously it's an open draw, it's it's Dublin or Tipperary. Um, but Cork will feel that look at they have the legs on on either of those potential opponents. And this is a big, big win. Now, that said, I thought Claire. You know, maybe the, the 70 minutes last weekend in, in this heat maybe took a little bit out of the tank. Um, Claire looked sluggish at the start. Cork had to really dig deep this afternoon. You know, the question is again, you know, can they get up to that same level um, in, in, in six or seven days' time? But uh, they're a side now that um, I, I think teams would prefer not to meet because they have weapons and they can hurt you. And as I said, as much as anything else, Grania, that ball that Seamus Harry had at the end, in the past, Cork forwards would have tapped that ball over the bar. This year, they're looking for more. We saw it during the league, we saw it at the end, and that's what got them over the line. Yeah, there's a more ruthless streak to them. In, in terms of Clare, though, Jamesy, I mean, how proud are you of their display here today? I'm immensely proud. Um, you know, I mean, to go, I suppose, you know, three weeks in a row isn't 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 easy or whatever. Or, or, sorry, four championship games in five weeks, but whatever it is, isn't easy. And look at it again, they emptied the, the tank, they left nothing, um, you know, every single percentage of every fibre in their bodies out there in the field today and gave it everything for clear and could have won it at the end. Um, so Brian will be looking really happy with the, with the effort um, and with what his group has given him. Now that said, right, if they're to kick on next year, they've got to go back and look at the, the turnovers, the unforced errors, the wides count again today, I think was 17 or 18. That's too high. They've got to get that down. And that, you know, that comes back to haunt you in the, in, in, in the bigger matches, you know, where the margins for error are, 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 are that much smaller. So, look, at plenty of positives to take out of what's been a really good championship campaign, but obviously, bitter disappointment at not getting over the line. And, you know, again, moral victories, Brian Lowen has no interest in those, mm. and he'll be disappointed that they're not in the, in the draw for the quarterfinals. That four, that four um, out of four weekends out of five that Claire had today, do you feel that maybe that was a factor in just maybe in that second half when things looked a bit lagging for them? I, I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, reason being is they finished very, very strong 
there as well. Like you know what I mean. But again, Brian Lowe and what he brings to the table, you, you die in your boots. You know the kind of that's what he instills in these players. He, he did he did that as a player. He gave me that impression when when I was young lad looking at him. I always wanted to be the kind of like him because he he just he was very very proud of, of where he was from and what he'd done on the field. So he he's bringing that back into the management. And them clear players have to be proud of what they've done over the last few weeks. No, look, you you could say they did, but they finished very very strong in the end. You know the kind of way. So it, I suppose when you lose the game, you can actually make that. But I won't say I wouldn't say any of the clear players will be saying that they wouldn't make that as an excuse, you know. It's similar to Galway earlier on, isn't it, Ali? I mean, they've both finished very strong, but moral victories mean nothing. You're out of the championship this evening. Yeah, very similar games. I think Clare were really pushing hard at the end there to get the scores, likewise with Galway earlier. But when you look back over the course of the game, did either team deserve to win it? Probably not with the, with the way they played. As James e pointed out, you know, Clare had a number of unforced turnovers, a bit like Galway, uh, some missed chances that they normally would score, a bit like Galway. So I think today the, the, the two teams that won play better over the 75 odd minutes um, and that's the way it goes and as James he said it, you know you don't take moral victories out of these things uh, it's nice to you know go that you know lose with your with your die with your boots on or whatever the saying is um, they really try to the bitter end but over the course of the game I think Cork deserves to win it okay so that means we're going to have a, a draw on Monday morning Jamesy so Tipperary and Dublin are already there so how how do you see this panning out? I know we have we can't we don't have a crystal ball to see how it's going to work out. But what would be the better draw, so to speak? It's hard to know. I mean, like certainly Tip. I was at the Tip Cork game in in Turles during the during the league, and Tip were really worried about the pace that Cork had. You know, the Tip defenders I think were really conscious about getting cover back, not leaving themselves exposed. And again, there were a couple of times that Cork, you know, when they got running at them and got that. You know that that passing game, guys coming off the shoulder, and they look like they could open tip, uh, open tip up. But tip a huge experience, um, and will make every effort to allow that not to happen. Um, so I think tip would fear Cork more than Waterford. Um, Dublin. How, can I just stop you there? How demoralised will Tipperary be, though, Jamesy? I mean, that was a really difficult second half for them against Limerick. Yeah, and, and, and listen, for, for the Tipperary players, it's not about Munster titles at this stage. It's about getting their hands on, on that All Ireland medal and the feeling maybe that, you know, Limerick maybe have this hex on them or have their number. Um, you know, it has to be a bitter pill to swallow. But look at no better group than Liam Sheedy, Eamon O'Shea, Tommy Dunn, Owen Kelly, Darren Gleeson, the, the tip management team, to get the tip players back up. There's still plenty of hurrying to be played, and tip came through. You know, the disappointment of losing the Munster final in, you know, in 2019 to, to, to ultimately end up with, with the biggest prize of all. So there's still a lot of hurling to be played. And, uh, you know, Limerick, you've got to go back outside of Kilkenny to Cork in, in 04 and 05. For the last time, somebody managed outside of Kilkenny, as I said, to put back-to-back -back titles together. So it's not a foregone conclusion. Limerick's still ahead of the pack, but the pack closing. And, uh, you know, Waterford as well will, will, will feel that if they can get their running game going and get that at that, get at that Tipperary defence, they can open up maybe a, a few chinks and create a few problems. So, yeah, intriguing draw ahead of us Monday morning. Yeah, how do you see it going? Your crystal ball, Ali. Just put your crystal ball out there. Who's going to come out? Well, I haven't picked too many winners so far. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, really, really big battles, I think. T different teams bring different uh, attributes to it. We saw the Cork pace today. They really, they really burnt Clare at the back at times. We saw Waterford's link-up play very, very, you know, cool on the ball. They created some great scores from overlaps. Um, so their running game was really up to speed today, and I think either of them teams may cause Tipperary some some trouble. Um, but who knows, uh, Grania? Yeah, something to look forward to next weekend. Yeah, and Dublin, of course, are there. Ono Dahl was an injury worry the last time. They will have the players that missed out due to just um, injuries and, co and COVID. Yeah, look, they'll be stronger now, I suppose. They, they were they were crippled with a few little injuries in in um, the Leicester final as well. So hopefully, Owen wasn't uh, wasn't a, it was in a serious injury. So hopefully, he'll be back training. But I think the guys with the close contact will be back during the week. So it's interesting. Interesting to see how they go um, coming to draw. But look, it's going to be a fantastic game. Um, Dublin will lick their lips. That's where they want to be. So they'll bring on all comers, I'd say, you know. OK, well, we're looking forward to that. And of course, we'll be showing one of those All-Ireland Hurling quarterfinals next weekend. The draw will take place on Monday morning. OK, so let's take a look then at results and how things finished off in the championship today. Of course, our games today saw so Waterford through that All-Ireland Hurling quarterfinal along with Cork. And later on this evening, we're going to have Leash and Westmead in Division 1 relegation playoff. In the Christie ring, then, Kerry play awfully in the final. In the Nicky Rackard Cup, sees last year's beaten finalist Mayo through to play Tyrone, who knocked out last year's championship done, champions Donegal. And in the Laurie Maher Cup final, we'll see an all-Ulster affair between Fermanagh and Cavan. 
Tomorrow, the Connacht Football Final takes place in a new home, Crow Park, with Galway and Mayo meeting at 1.30 p.m. Traditional rivals Kerry and Cork will then meet in the Munster Final with a 4 p.m. throw-in from Fitzgerald Stadium. Cork shot Kerry last year in the Munster semi-final. Can they do it again? We'll soon find out. But we're back next Saturday with that All-Ireland Hurling quarter-final to be confirmed. Check out Sky Sports GAA for that. And next Wednesday sees us back with another episode of Inside the Game on Sky Sports Arena as we review this weekend's actions and look ahead to next weekend's fixtures. But Shin A, my thanks to Ali, JJ and Jamesy for their company today. What games we have had. Thrillers in Semple Stadium and Limerick. Until next weekend then, from all of us here, Slan and take care. <laughs>